Hi guys, I am so excited to be here with you today to interview Dr. Uma Johnson. Now I told you guys that I was gonna hunt him down, I was gonna find him, and I was gonna ask the questions that we all want the answers to. So, um, here he is, Dr. Uma. Glad to be with you. Thank you so much for taking the opportunity to speak with me today. Um, I'm really excited about your passion I want to see you get your life's work done um, because I feel like it's Im important, you know, as a former school teacher. And what sparked this conversation was a status on Facebook. Mm -hmm. I, um, I showed one of your interviews on Facebook and I got a lot of feedback. Mm -hmm. So I want to address some of those issues because I feel like a lot of times in our community, we don't have that platform. And so I mm -hmm. want nappynaturalgirl.com as an independent source to be able to talk to people and get the answers. Mm -hmm. So, um, my first question, um, which I think is a burning question, because I've heard you speak on religion. Mm -hmm. And so there are people like us who don't necessarily feel like we need religion to tell us what to do to govern us or mm -hmm. to, to guide us morally. But then mm -hmm. there are other people who do in our community. And how do we, you know, as a community, deal with that dilemma? I think that one of the decisions we need to make or paradigm shifts that need to happen is we need to stop trying to dictate people's religious beliefs. For me, the religion is not as big as a problem as other people perceive it to be. And that's because, for me, it's not what a person believes religiously, but how they think politically, economically, and culturally that determines whether or not we can work together for the benefit of our people. If I look at the example that the Honorable Marcus Garvey left us with, one of the reasons why his movement was the largest and the most successful we had in modern times is because he never attacked the religion, nor did he try to change it. When you look at most leaders after Marcus Garvey, they all brought a religion, every one of them. Honorable Elijah Muhammad brought Islam. Noble Drew Ali brought Islam. Dr. King brought Christianity and, and so forth and so on. So the wisdom of Garvey, which I agree with, was that he said, leave the religion alone. You're not gonna be able to change people's religions. In fact, we're conditioned to back away from anyone who disagrees with our religious beliefs. So the way in which black people are indoctrinated will cause division if anyone tries to get them to think outside of the box. So I stay clear of people's religions. If I can change the way that they think politically and economically, they will come to a point where they may soon question their own religion without any outside interference. Okay. All right, so in terms of that, because what I find is that in our community, it's like, hey, what's your name, what's your religion? Yes. So for we me- We make it too important. Yeah, how do we tackle that? Like how do I, let's say, as a, someone who is not very religious, mm -hmm. um, how do I tackle that? Because, you know, I try to tell people, well, you know, it would be better if you asked me what what Bible verse I like more or what mm -hmm. part of the Quran speaks to me the most to get to know me than what church I go to or what your religion or what's your religion. So for me, I'm saying, how do us as a conscious community who want to help break that religious barrier? How do we approach that in our day to day living? Mm -hmm. I think um, we have to respect people's religion, and I think we need to focus on what our people are not focused on. In other words, religion occupies a very important place in African American life and social thought. So for me, I believe we should focus on those aspects of our reality that are being completely ignored. The political organization, the economic organization, uh, the Pan-African movement. I think that we need to make other conversations more important than religion because guess what everyone can change their religion tomorrow it doesn't change the condition of the community if religion was the problem you should be able to change it or get rid of it and see your problems dissolve if we took religion away our problems would still be here because religion is not a cause religion is a symptom of historical amnesia religion is a symptom of an absence of a knowledge of self. Religion is a symptom of a people who needs an identity because they lost their original one. The reason religion is so important for black people is because we were stripped of our culture. So religion has replaced culture as our primary identifier. So back home in Africa, we would say, hey, I'm Zulu, you know, I'm Wolof, okay, I'm Igbo, 
Okay, I'm Yoruba, I'm Hausa. That's what we would be saying back home. But we were stripped of those cultural identities. And so religion has taken the place of them. That's the only reason why they're important. So if you replace the knowledge itself that was stolen, if you eliminate the historical amnesia with historical consciousness, I think the role of religion, you may not get rid of people's religions, but the importance that our people place on religion would probably wither down significantly if they had another identity. So give them back what slavery took away and religion will lose its hold. Okay. So um, on the way here, we caught um, your lecture.